Once again, welcome to Pull My Focus Adventures in Digital Filmmaking. Today I'm going to take you through my process for checking for proper white balance and setting proper skin tones in our videos. And before we get started, spoiler alert, this video right here is sort of a part two of the video that we posted prior to this dealing with the skin tone line on the Vectroscope. So if you haven't seen it, I highly recommend you watch this video right now and then come back to this. Okay, so there are tons of videos and articles on uh, the internet on how to white balance your videos. So why do another one? Well, because here on Pull My Focus, we love to share the stuff that we learn and that we discover. Now, I found through my own research and experience how to get results that work for me. So be sure to post in the comments section any questions or ideas you may have on this subject. First, let's start with the white balance. And this starts in production. We don't want to wait until we get our footage into the edit timeline before we start addressing white balance issues. But why do we even need to think about it? I mean, can't you just set your camera to auto white balance and call it a day? In a word, no. Aww. All right, look, the only possible way I could suggest using auto white balance setting on your camera is if you're setting up one shot for like a vlog and you're never gonna move the lights or hell, you don't even have lights and you just, no, I'm sorry, I, I, I can't do it. I'm convinced that you should never use the auto white balance feature. The main reason is that there are so many different lighting situations that your camera won't possibly know about. So it can only guess what the neutral color in your shots is. If you're a super newbie at white balance, let's break it down using just the settings that are in most DSLR cameras, just to get an idea of what I'm talking about. Advanced folks, hang in there. The detailed stuff is coming. Okay, for this, I'm using the Canon 5D Mark III, but most DSLRs will have similar white balance settings. Wow. So outside of auto white balance, there are a bunch of settings. Uh, okay, let's make this super simple. Number one, never use auto white balance. Good, now that's out of the way. We can probably also limit this list to a more simple selection. So let's get rid of these. Now we have to choose only one of three. Daylight, tungsten, and fluorescent. Okay, take a look at the key or the strongest light in your space and set your white balance to that setting. So if you're under fluorescent lights at home, set the camera to fluorescent. Or if you're outside, set it to daylight. Uh, if you have old school tungsten lights, then set it to that. The pros will know that this is really oversimplifying the issue, but you gotta start somewhere. The point is to give your camera the information it needs so that it knows what your neutral color is. Why do I keep saying neutral color? Well, white is a neutral color. White reflects equal amounts of all visible light back to your eyes and back to the sensor of your camera. That's basically what we mean by white balance. By telling your camera what lights you're using, you give it the information that it needs to properly render white. Because lights have different color temperatures. Now watch this. This is a vectorscope monitor. Just like in the explanation in our skin tone sketch that you definitely watched, right? So with this, if I have a balanced white, there should be a dot directly in the middle. Now, watch as I change the light color temperature with these sheets of CTO and CTB. Notice how the dot moves into the reds and into the blues. Now, this is what happens to your video if it's not properly white balanced. You end up with strange color hues or, or weird things in your footage. Well, you say, I can simply fix this in post, right? Well, check this out. First, every time you say, fix it in post, I want you to ram your head into the nearest wall as hard as you can. I'll wait. <laughs> the problem with that solution is unless you have a neutral color in your shot, and unless all your footage has the same lighting, you will only be guessing at what white is supposed to look like. And you'll have to rely on your eyes. And your eyes can deceive. For example, look at this dress. Do you see a gold and white dress or do you see a gold and blue dress? Look at the square marked A and the square marked B in this photo. Totally different shades of gray, right? Nope. Once again, A and B are definitely different, right? And believe it or not, this is the exact same person in A and B. Don't trust your eyes. This is why we rely on scopes and meters when doing any color work. 
But before we get to the scopes, one thing to do when shooting multiple scenes across different types of lighting is we attach white cards to our slate to act as a consistent reference for white balance. In the skin tone sketch, our AD held up the slate so that at the top of every shot, we had a white balance reference card. Now these guys right here, you can find them on Amazon and they're super useful. Like I said, don't wait until post-production to get this right. Now, let's get to the scopes and the rest of our procedure. I have my footage in Premiere, but the procedure can be easily duplicated in other editors. First, I check white balance using the slate with our white balance reference cards. Under opacity, I can create a mask so that I can only see the white card. And then I can see how close to this neutral color that I actually am. Looks like we were pretty damn close. To set this in the center, I can either move the temperature and tint sliders, or I can just use the WB selector dropper tool and tell Premiere to set neutral white to this color. Now, one side note is that there are people who actually don't use the white card to set white balance. They actually use this 18% gray card as the gray card can be used for white balance and exposure. Now, I've used both in the past, but that debate could be the subject of an entire video. But I will say this, the white card and gray card are both neutral. So they can be both used to set white balance. My only suggestion is that you stay consistent throughout your production. If you use the gray card for white balance, stick with it throughout all your footage. Bang, my white balance is set. Next, on to the skin tone. Once again, to set proper skin tone, we use our vector scope. Remember the skin tone line? Well, let's use this to our advantage. And we can use it on anyone, even this guy. I will once again create a mask over my subject to isolate the skin and see where the scope sits. Looks like we're right under the line. This makes our subject look a little more yellow than we want. There are a few ways to fix this. In Premiere, I want to fix it but not mess with the white balance. If I start dragging colors around willy-nilly, I'll ruin my previous white balance settings. So currently, I tend to use the fast color corrector effect. Now this lets me adjust the hue angle of the image, effectively rotating the vector scope so that my talent skin sits on the line. Notice what happens when I overdial or underdial. Pretty weird, right? That's about it. Now my white balance and skin tones look great. If you want, in Premiere, you can copy these effects to the master clip so that the changes apply to anywhere that this clip gets used. You can then adjust your color by setting black levels and white levels, shadows, contrasts, etc. Now I will suggest if you're stuck with footage that has no white balance reference at all and you need to color correct, if there are people in the shot, then focus on getting their skin tones correct. Once they look normal, you should have a pretty decent looking shot. For this video, I've been doing everything within Premiere. Obviously, you can use other programs like SpeedGrade, DaVinci Resolve, Film Convert, Red Giant Magic Bullet Suite called Colorista, the list goes on. The point is to be mindful of setting up a neutral color for white balance and adjusting the skin tones. The vector scope is a bit daunting at first, but once you get used to it, it's indispensable in your arsenal of color correcting tools. I'm leaving many links to the articles and videos that I use to research this topic in the description below. But I do want to mention a specific article by Larry Jordan, which talks in great detail about getting skin tones correct in his article, Color Correction, Make People Look Normal. Pretty much anything by Larry is pure gold. That's all for now. Don't forget to check out our articles on PullMyFocus.tv for more digital filmmaking tips, tricks, and techniques. I can't say that, Frank. Jesus Christ. That's it for now. Don't forget to check out our articles on PullMyFocus.tv for more digital filmmaking tips, tricks, and techniques. Yes! Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, and all that other good stuff, and we'll see you on the next one.